how do you communicate that to somebody? Right. Say, My say thing I, is, I came in and and I was able to wow you enough for you to hire me. But all my training is YouTube and Google. And I didn't see it. You didn't see it. But then as, as I'm working with you, mm -hmm. you're like. I can start to see the flaws like, because of, I can tell you didn't have any training. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you then, as a leader, how, how, how do you go from that to making them more into what you need them to be? For me, I would say, look, you need to take a typo typography class. You need to take a color class. You need to take a 3D or rendering class. You don't have to take rendering A, B, and C, mm -hmm. or you know, 101, 102, and 103. You just need to go get the fundamentals of it. You've already got the talent, and it should, when you get in there, it should click yeah. of what you're missing. And that's what I would do. Beyond that, that's also on notice. Say, hey, I, I, I see you. <laughs> <laughs> you got this far, but yep. you see the gaps or where you're, what you're missing. But I'll definitely give you the tools. I'll pay for the class for you to, you know, because I can see that there's potential and I can see that you have talent. There's just a couple of things that, you know, that are fundamentals yeah. that you have to learn that you didn't learn that you online university did not teach you. This is Garrett and Sita from Idea to Invention, a podcast for inventors and small businesses. And so we're going to Continue our conversation on COVID-19. With, with DJ Isaac in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Isaac can hear the yeah. fact that we got music just right, blaring. pumping. Pump. <laughs> here, we, here we go. But either way. So, <laughs> as DJ Isaac. The campaign is live. Awesome. As DJ Isaac has brought down the music. In We're the here. house, right. In the house. The lights came on. It's time for y'all to get out. <laughs> <laughs> See, oh my God. See, this had me flash back to when we was having house parties and the mm. music was going. He lights know, came he, on. Gary used to live in a fraternity house. I can't yeah. believe I spent the night in that thing one time. Did you? Yes. That was one of the nightmares of my life. Remember, because really? they came home. Nairobi and, and um, Ra came, Rob and all of them came home. <gasps> wow. Yeah. Chanting and all that. Yeah, that's one. That's, yeah. yeah. I can't believe you lived there. I, I lived there under certain conditions. What does that mean? The fact that I had, I think I had the second best room because Mark had the best room. No, I had the second or third best room. Mark had the best room because it was the biggest. And then Howard had the room downstairs because it was the most secluded away off the kitchen. And I had the room that was literally right off of the steps. So those three rooms, we didn't have roommates. All the other rooms in the house. Oh, that was the standard of best rooms? Because I'm like, none of them would have yeah. qualified as I a mean, best mine, room. I mean, mine was a, <laughs> shoot, mine was a pretty much a studio apartment. <laughs> and it, but either way, it was, it was an experience. I always wanted to live in a frat house. I was only there for Did you really always want to live in a frat house? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was one of your bucket list items. Yeah, I did it. Wow. And, but, but see, okay, so I, I wanted to live in a frat house in the, the fantasy of what a frat house would be that we would have cleaning oh, services. Two, those we are white people frat houses. Now, but I'm just on. telling you where I'm coming from. We would have cleaning services. <laughs> Watching we would too have, much TV. Wasn't we, nobody telling we you We would have somebody, deal. you know, coming in, cooking. First of all, when somebody told me that, dinner. they were like, are you rushing? And I'm like, I don't even know what that is. But then when I found out what rushing was and what you got if you rushed a sorority, one of the right, white sororities, yeah. I was like, why would anybody leave college if that's, you, you know, but that, I didn't oh, know that's living. what they came from probably anyway. Yeah, no, they were shooting. But how you got a the house white, made and a house and, and. That's, that's, that was, that was the rich, the rich fraternities and sororities, white fraternities and sororities kind of came with, right, 
but, but, but you, but you still, but you still paid, you still paid for. Well, your parents paid. You didn't your, pay. Your, you know, for your 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 fraternity or sorority fees as well as like room and board. You still paid room and board at those houses. But I did the same thing, and I went. I did not have a house made. I paid room and board all five years of school. Yeah, but it took me five years to get out. <laughs> a black fraternity house and a white fraternity house on that campus with night and day, night and day, night and day. E- even and we even me and the couple of other sensible fraternity brothers in our chapter we were like, okay, y'all, if we can commit to, and it was literally as small as like. Five bucks. Okay, so sounds like this is going down. Oh, I'm sorry. Line. But anyway, yeah. we went to Northern Illinois University in DeKalb with an L. I don't know why when you come to Georgia, that L disappears. DeKalb. Mm-hmm. In DeKalb, Georgia. DeKalb, yeah. No, Illinois. I'm sorry. Yeah. DeKalb, Illinois. Home of the Huskies. Go Huskies. You have to do the Husky yep. sign. So we went to there. We went there for undergrad, and then I went on to DePaul, P-A-U-L, DePaul for a grad school. When they let me out after I did five years, you were I felt like I was a freed slave. <laughs> <laughs> I ran away as fast as I could and swore, oh God, I'll never go back. <laughs> I will never go back. Yeah. And I still have the reoccurring dream to this day, whenever I get stressed. It's called the anxiety dream. Yes, it is. That I totally forgot to go to one of my classes but showed up at graduation yeah and they were like um sweetheart you didn't go to this <laughs> class and i'm like i've got to get out <laughs> just please let me out and i'm like how do how do you register for a class and just forget to go the whole semester my thing is how were you having an anxiety dream about graduating college when you graduated at almost the top of your class for your major because I was ready to go. I'm the one that should have been having anxiety because. Right. Cause sh- I remember when you got that D the, in engineering. Ooh, God, dog it. That day. I mean, on graduation day. Right. You found out you passed that class. Found out I passed that class. What are you talking I about? I shed a tear for you that day. Yeah. Engineer- and look, engineering ain't no joke. There are some it just falls easy to. It, I mean, it, some parts of it felt easy to me, but I just had a professor. He was. Mm, he was a piece of work. And he I and I just didn't get, a, right. get along. I was an artist. <laughs> I was an artist, and everybody loved him some Cito. Which is what attracted me to you very much. Oh, so, thank you. The whole artist piece. You were, you were, you you were an oddity amongst. Seriously, I mean, if you think, I mean, amongst. Yeah, because I was the only black in my department too. <laughs> 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 we had a couple. No, in, right, en- in engineering, we had it was me, Terrence. I can't remember the other brother's name. It was an electrical engineer and one young lady. So it was four of us. It was me. Yeah. No, Not you, even a, a you were my fighting. closest brown was. There was a Hispanic in, weren't they? Was, wasn't there? And um, you're, two uh, Mexican guys. I was the closest brown I could get. Yo, you were fighting the battle. But either way. Oh, and a Filipino. We, uh, <laughs> we get sidetracked very easily. No, we can continue talking about Northern. Yeah. Unless you want to talk, it's up to you. No, I mean Northern was was good, but it, I mean for those who are who are listening and and what you can get out of the conversation um, about our trip down memory lane about college is that um, college in the north is definitely different than college in the south. Oh, college in the south is a whole different. It's that's a it's 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 different. It really is different. But when it comes to entrepreneurship. Um, you just have you have to what I've learned you have to be able to take whatever you've learned whatever you have been educated to do there's some certain principles of everything right so even in the classes that you took for for graphic artists for graphic design and the classes that I took for engineering they're just you're, you take some certain principles of what you've been taught and you can apply those principles to entrepreneurship mm-hmm. to be very successful. Are you saying you don't get that in the South or what are you saying? No, I'm just saying that I, I, I was going down the path. I don't want people to think that college is the only way for you. No, 
to I mean, succeed. And the College of Hard Knocks can teach you how to be yeah, a huge really, entrepreneur. I mean, college, it's about the drive. College, is, college should help you expand your brain, your thinking, right? Um, which, you know would, which should help with entrepreneurship. But some I colleges totally don't, so. believe that college, yeah. the, especially the university system in the United States, and I'm probably going to get flack for this, I believe that it's a way to maintain a middle class because all of those people that go yeah. end up so in debt with what they have to pay to go to school. For the major- majority, majority of the folks. Right. Yeah, you know, a large, large percentage. Right. So you have to graduate and you have to get a job. And then you are, you know, well, still uh, how many years after graduation, you're still paying for student paying. loans. But think about so it. So that's think, to maintain a middle class. Think about when, when we walked on campus, how easy was it to get a credit card? They were throwing credit card statements at I didn't even know, first of all, excuse me, I'm about to burp. Excuse me. Sorry about that. It's these doggone chickpeas. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't even know what a credit card was when I got to school. Mm-hmm. I knew how to write a check. I knew about, you know, bank account, um, bank account savings and checking. Yeah. You know, I knew the basics. And literally, I knew where the Bursar's office was. So I could go cash the check that my mom wrote to me for $20. So I would have, you know, a little cash in my pocket credit card didn't even know what it was for didn't even, i mean what you could do with it mm-hmm. but yet when you went to go buy books yep the bag that they sent you home with had at least 10 20 credit card, credit applications. card applications in it cards yep and when you when you went to the bookstore that was it and then they'd be they'd set up in the what was our call it wasn't a quad it's like the quad but right outside the student center that big open circle oh. in the spring and in the summer, they used to have tables set up. I mean, it was like the quad. But we didn't call it the quad. What did we call it? I can't tell you. I couldn't remember. Where they built the tribute to Martin Luther King. Right, that funnel thing. Funnel thing. <laughs> just like, what does, I don't understand right, how what does that, that means. Tie to, but either way. Well, hidden race. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> they would have tables set up. From different credit card companies. So when you when you, you went, you know, when you what is it called when you transfer move when you move yeah. classes and you transferred between right, you know one, one building another. or another, mm-hmm. they would stop you to get, you know, and they'd be like, We'll give you a case of Coke <laughs> if you fill out <laughs> and we were like, A whole case? I'll fill out every single All right. You get five bags of Doritos if you fill out <laughs> And you don't need your parents' permission. Sounds like preparatory lending. Predatory. There you go. (laughs) (laughs) That sounds kind of right, but kind of wrong. (laughs) Predatory. (laughs) Or predatory lending. And I remember, now you got to understand that we went to school right outside of Chicago. And our school, Northern Illinois University in DeKalb, Illinois, was known as a suitcase school. And I was like, what is a suitcase school? So what it was is that people from the surrounding Chicago city and suburbs would be, Northern was like a weekend trip. They didn't really move in. They just came with a suitcase and did what they had to do. And then they would go home, mm-hmm. go home on the weekends. But you have to understand, majority of the minority people that uh, attended Northern were not financially able to usually sustain themselves yeah most of them were there through um uh, not scholarship chance. but yeah the chance program of that in itself the name of it explains what it is supposed was that you, me or supposed you? to give you a chance i don't know about me um so i mean giving someone who's never had the finances um whose parents, you know, can only, they are coming from a certain income level. Giving them access to credit cards, even if it's a $1,000 limit, with no credit history, with no cosigner. At a 15% interest rate. No, it was like 29%. (laughs) Easily. And you didn't care about the 29% because guess what? 
your Pell Grant check was going to come in and you were going to get your refund. So you're using your refund after you get through buying your, buying your silks <laughs> and your, uh, what was the jackets? Um, what the, not, not um, I had members a Northern, only. Yeah, not kind of yeah. like, but I had a Northern Illinois satin jacket. <laughs> Is that what you bought with your credit card? I didn't have a credit. I couldn't get, I didn't, oh. I was scared. I didn't get them. Oh, okay. Um, but I know my friends did. Um, Cause it was them. What was them glasses? Uh, the gazelles. No, they were straight across the top. Yeah, gazelles. Looking like a uh, MC Hammer. MC Hammer, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Hammer time. That was a silk shirt, which was actually rayon. Um, rayon what else? Had, what were the What many, were the shoes? I had yeah, some rayon you, shirts. You had plenty of rayon Ooh. shirts. Mm. Still, probably got a couple downstairs in the basement. Nope, all gone. <laughs> What else was they was it were they wearing? I mean, that's what like cross colors wasn't cross colors big at that time too. I don't know about no cross Timbaland colors. Timberland boots. Timberlands, yes. Um, TLC. So all the girls were buying jeans that looked like that looked like guys' jeans. Um, what else? Because every Chicago, Chicago people were like fashion plates. They when they came oh, yeah. to school it was all about the dress. Even though when they went home they could be sleeping on a mattress on the floor. But it was all about what your gear was, and you were using your. Because once you filled out your now. FAFSA, it's all about their gear. Right now, millennials are in, in Generation Zers. Look yeah, at, but they're not. He's talking about drip. He paying crazy dollars for a T-shirt. He's still living at home now. Same thing. It's about his drip. I know, but it's it's to me it's a little different when you're away at school, and you're getting credit card and you're using your refund check. No, yeah. To yeah. finance that. Yeah. But that's what it was, it was like it. College is college is set up to make you in debt. To have you be in debt for the ge- for the for gen- the, for the general population, right? For the majority, but they majority. feed it to you that the only way you can succeed is if you it's go to college and get that degree. Which is not not, right. not necessarily true, especially now with YouTube University. Please, if I had known now, like if they had, if the internet was a thing in 1990, first of all. I would have been summa cum laude if I could have taken, taken all of my <laughs> classes online. I would have been a genius <laughs> because to take a class online right now, they, like, they're serious. Like, they're asking me questions, but all I got to do is hit the back button. Because <laughs> I, I got the answer Copy, right paste, and put it. <laughs> but, it's all, but you think about it, though. It's also the way it's, education is it's changing it's, isn't it, doesn't it seem like it's becoming more obvious that it's about the knowledge versus the institution itself, right, of where you go or the degree? It's about, it's about what you're, you're getting, right? Because if, if you can take a class online, okay, and you don't have to go physically somewhere, you don't have to go physically on a campus or anything, mm-hmm. The important piece is what the knowledge is that you get. Right. But it's also still somewhat about the course where you're taking the course. Because I can tell you this. I didn't really realize it until I got my two certificates. Oh, Lord. Go. Two. Double mint twins. Two certificates from Cornell University. Which, first of all, I didn't even know that was a thing. <laughs> It just so happened. And now it's a big deal. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I just happened to <laughs> apply for like this grant thing for women entrepreneurs. And they're like, yeah, you can take this free online class. Oh, and by the way, by the way, it's from Cornell. And I was like, okay, cool. When I put that on my LinkedIn that I got a certificate from Cornell, I mean, it was folks congratulating it, congratulating me from like well, I'm like, I didn't get a degree from Cornell. I just literally finished an online class. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact that I can physically be in Georgia and get a certificate, I could have got, I mean, they have online degree programs that I could physically be here and get that degree from Georgia, I mean, from Cornell. Yeah. And the price be, because I think the second class I took was like $2,000. And it's like, and how, how, long, how long was the class? 
it felt like forever because I was ready to tap weeks, out. Though? By the time it was done, I was like, I need this to be over. Yeah, you have not exercised That's when I started your having. Brain. <laughs> That's why I was like, I started having those dreams again because I'm like, I gotta finish my class. Um, so was I think it was, eight weeks. it was eight weeks. The second one was eight weeks because I took. It was a core course, and then I took two electives, which I didn't know I was signing up for two electives when I took it. And when it was over, I was like, please, God, don't let another module pop up <laughs> for me to finish. But it was a great class. It was absolutely a great class. And it was, you know, it was all about, the first one was about women, female entrepreneurship and all the obstacles and things yeah. that, you know, that you might be up against. And the second one was, was about corporate communication. And... uh just being a leader and what you have to, you know, all your responsibilities and how you should communicate things and, you know, when to communicate, when not, and when to take, you know, how to attack it from this point of view versus that point of view mm -hmm. and blah, 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 blah. But it was really, really good. But the fact that. But it's, but it's teaching you that you can, you don't necessarily have to go get a degree to get You're right. To I didn't have to knowledge. get a degree because I was not, because like you, you've always been one to be like, yeah, I'll go back to school in a heartbeat. Like I said. I felt like I escaped when I got out of college. But there are certain things I wanted to learn, but I didn't want to commit to another degree, to yeah. going, doing whatever I had to do to get another degree. It was like <clears throat> the fact that even now, and what I'm saying is I would have never done five years at Northern Illinois University if I could have taken my core classes it really, I, you really only needed to do, once you were in your program, mm -hmm. you really only really need to do those two years yep. in order to get a job. So what's the purpose of the first two years? It's a certain amount of money that they got to make uh, before they let you, let you into your major. I think. Those first two years aren't to prepare you to get into your major? No, I had to take chemistry. That has nothing to do with visual communications. Mm. I escaped with a D with that class. I was so, it was a four credit class, ruined my GPA. But I literally was in that professor's office every time he had open hours, looking like uh, 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 um, like those dogs on those a <laughs> what is it ASCPS commercials or whatever. <laughs> like she needs help. <laughs> I, that's how I felt in chemistry class. And he literally was like, you really don't understand this. I've been telling you, <laughs> there's nothing you can say. You cannot break it down and any further, and I'm going to understand this. But, you but in, your, in your end career result, you didn't, you didn't even need chemistry. That's what I'm saying. So it's like, it's like, why in the world would you force someone to take a class that has no bearing on what they're going to do professionally? Right. Finite math. I have got a phone full of calculations. <laughs> Why do I have to take finite math? Finite math. But all of that, all the, the core classes, none of it was to help you navigate so society. None other than maybe sociology. None of it was designed to the core required I classes. I think it's all designed <coughs> to pull you on campus to get you acclimated to being on campus and not pretty much preparing you for your, your, your core classes, unless, unless you're doing a specific discipline, um, like pre-med or engineering or nurse, right? Mm -hmm. So then, then th those things make sense for you to take calculus, chemistry, you know, biology and whatever, because, mm -hmm. you're, because of that discipline. But yeah, if your discipline doesn't, Require what in the heck would you need to do with finite math as a graphic artist? That don't make any sense. But if it wasn't for Nairobi, I wouldn't have gotten through. <laughs> if it wasn't for him sitting in front of me in Cole Hall with his paper slightly to the side, <laughs> I could see over his shoulder. I would have never made it through the finite math. Oh my goodness! So that's when the sister got to do what I got to do. Kids, don't repeat what she's doing. <laughs> <laughs> Do I still got that degree, and they can't take it back. <laughs> yeah, they can't take it back, but <laughs> no need to go down that dishonest path. No, hey, it was survival. It wasn't being dishonest. It was straight up survival. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh my goodness. So the So do you think anything that you you any of the knowledge you received in your cuz you got a total of 7 year 7 years of of school cuz you went you went to community mm-hmm. college for two. You went to Northern. University at Northern Illinois University for 3 or 2. Two and a half. Two and a half. Then you went and got your master's from DePaul, P-A-U-L, not DePaul. Yeah. Uh, for another two. two. So, yeah. Six, seven years? Seven, seven to eight years, yeah. Plus what? a certificate from Northwestern University. Oh, yeah, you got a certificate, for too. For executive management. But either way. From Northwestern University. <laughs> If you put that on LinkedIn, they'll be like, congratulations <laughs> on your new degree. You finished. <laughs> You'd be like, this was 19. <laughs> right. 19 something, something. So Has it question? prepared you for, did any of that prepare you for where you are today? Um, I would say it prepared me because it taught me how to think. Like the engineering classes mm-hmm. taught me how to think um, critical thinking, and um, more of a systematic type of thought process of how to problem solve. That's what, it, that's what, the, that's what mo- I mean, that's the most I pull out of it, of understanding how to, s- okay, you got a problem, how to step back and start breaking it, <clears throat> breaking it down in pieces in order to solve the problem and that critical thinking. That's, mm-hmm. that's what it provided me. Well, I can say that I've been able to save a lot of money by you by being the graphic designer for Puff Cuff. I have not had Mm -hmm. to outsource it until not outsource. I've never had to hire um, a graphic designer to do everything until it got to the point where it was too much for me to do. Yeah. So I can definitely say I can use I've used my degree for that. And I can definitely say that I can recognize a designer who's been to a university versus YouTube University. <laughs> Which one is better? The person who's been to a university. Why is because that? Because they think more holistically and not about just whatever the... There's theory to design and color and everything else. Everything is not haphazard. And people who learn online just by taking a Photoshop class or Illustrator class... They just learn all the tips and tricks that are hidden in the program. And not to actually. How to execute something that looks, you know, communicates a purpose or so, communicates a thought. So it's not, but it sounds like you're saying on one hand that you don't necessarily have to go to a university or go get a degree. A four-year degree. I don't think you need to. So, can, so using the graphic arts example... Can someone have that theory and understanding that a university graphic arts degree would provide without going to a university? I think some people inherently have, you know, the gift of this is what you're meant to do. Mm -hmm. You just need to be um, taught uh, how to finesse your talent, basically. And... I can tell between someone who has, they have the it already and they've used education to finesse it versus someone who says, you know what? Graphic design looks cool. I'm going to be a graphic designer now and I'm just going to go to Google and say, you know, graphic designer class, (laughs) $69.99. Where it's not necessarily in them right it's not in them but because they took a couple you know online classes through some you know right so it's just just like or did a did some youtube tutorials now i'm a graphic designer no it don't quite work like that just like someone saying that they can sing or someone that can sing it's different right right so you can tell i get right but typically I would say I can tell because of the fundamentals that I was taught when I went when I got my degree. And okay. I can it's like, you know what, um I mean it just you're just 
you can see more because there's certain things like um like i can if your text is wrong if the kerning is off if the letting is off stuff like that photoshop's not going to teach you so then how how do you how do you communicate that to somebody right say say I, i came in and and i was able to wow you enough for you to hire me but all my training is YouTube and Google. And I didn't see it. And you didn't see it. But then as, as I'm working with you, mm-hmm. you're like. I can start to see the flaws like, because of, I can tell you didn't have any training. Mm-hmm. How, do you, how do you then, as a leader, how, how, how do you go from that to making them more into what you need them to be? For me, I would say, look. You need to take a typography class. You need to take a color class. You need to take a 3D or rendering class. You don't have to take rendering A, B, and C, Mm -hmm. or, you know, 101, 102, and 103. You just need to go get the fundamentals of it. You've already got the talent, and it should, when you get in there, it should click of what you're missing. Uh And that's what I would do. Beyond that, that's also on notice that, hey, I, I, I see you. <laughs> <laughs> you got this far, but yeah. you see the gaps or where you're, what you're missing, but I'll definitely give you the tools. I'll pay for the class for you to, you know, because I can see that there's potential and I can see that you have talent. Right. There's just a couple of things that, you know, that are fundamentals yeah. that you have to learn that you didn't learn that you online university did not teach you. Okay. Well, that's 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 good. So you wouldn't just come in and be like, uh, "No soup for you." No. Uh-uh. <laughs> you got to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so the the whole essence of the uh, the end of the story about college and and whether it's necessary or not. In some cases, it, it is based on. I want my doctor to have several degrees. Right, you there's a specific skill level. I want my lawyer to specific, have several degrees. <laughs> specific vocations that you want them right, to have. Right, right, right. But then there's some some other my vocations. My photographer does not necessarily have to have a right. degree. Yeah, okay. All I right. want my HVAC to be certified. Certified, my HVAC person. Yeah. Right. I don't want him to have just watched a YouTube video and now he's going to come fix my air conditioning. Hmm. But. So that's so if it's something that's left brain. Is that what it oriented. is? Oriented. Mm-hmm. You want that, if that vocation is left brain oriented, then you want that person to have a degree. Name some. Engineer. Right? Because you're, you're right, the right brain is more the, the uh, art, creative. artistic, creative side of the brain. And so, um, but the left brain is more analytical. And, and those vocations that require that, um, you want them to have some type of certification or levels of of practical training in order to. Mm-hmm. to do. That, that, that makes sense. That makes sense. I wonder if education is changing that way. I think it could, but I think there's too much money involved. Mm. Wow. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So how, because we were initially supposed to be talking about COVID, but we got to Northern. Well, that can be another episode. So um, how has Northern, how, so how has your, your, if you can think back, your overall experience in Northern benefited you? I found you. <laughs> well, <laughs> I won't disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> but overall, though, I mean, as right, I mean, where where would you say is North has Northern played a part in the hustle of Sita, or where? where I has think this trying to get through school was a hustle for me. 
in all honesty. I was just like, I felt like I didn't feel like school was like it was on TV. Oh, you're in college. You have parties. You, you know. Like a different Go world. eat in. Yeah, that was not school for me. You know, everybody likes each other. Everybody, you know, you hang out on. Were the, you by yourself? I mean, did you feel like it was just. <laughs> And when I say that, I'm meaning I'm, I'm thinking like family. I'm thinking like right, uh-huh. mom, dad, and every, every. Did you feel like when you got to Northern that it was just you, you, you were trying to get yourself through mm-hmm. school? It was. It was what do you call it? Fight or flight. <laughs> 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 it was because my thing was I had to stay at school because I was not going back home. That was my. So, so school that for was you. My, one of your initial things about school was it was an escape. Yes, it was an escape from Alton, Illinois. That's A L T, O N, <laughs> Illinois. Right off, right off, um, fifty five heading south. Well, well, we're in the south, so heading north. Where Miles Davis was born. And the man who shot, um, who assassinated uh, Martin Luther King. Yes. Okay. That's the bad part. That's a great part of being from Alton, Illinois. It's like the really. Couldn't y'all have taken care of that? <laughs> it's like, could we have not have handled him before? How do you, how did that, how, yeah, that's my hometown. Yeah. And Robert Rodlow, Wadlow, which was another, the tall, one of the tallest men uh, in the world. Yeah. It's also extreme racist. But anyway. So, so yeah, only thing we got shining out of Alton, Illinois is Miles Davis and me. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. <laughs> not, no, no. You also have um, Ezekiel Elliott. Who is that? Oh my God! You like look him up. He's a running back for oh Dallas he came Cowboys. from Cowboys. Yes. Oh, he's an Elliot. Yes, that is one of the Alton last names. Yep. Yes. So we've got three. There's a couple more. Anybody else? Oh, Jarrett Terry. Yep. He's at FSU. Florida yep. State. Yep. Vice what, Vice Provost. Mm-hmm. With his genius wife. Yep. yep. And they got genius children. Yeah. So, something in the when water. you're in your pre- their presence, they make you know they make they they don't they're not outwardly geniuses, but you just know that you're in the company of really smart people. <laughs> they're down to earth. They're down very to earth. down to earth, but you're just like, dang, there's so much knowledge. Just you know, just let a little bit of it ooze off on me. Yeah, yeah. very very smart. So answer my question. So did it help you? Being from Alton or no. being from. Being from NIU, being from your whole experience, from nor- your, how did it help shape what you? I would say it ended up my experience with Northern in terms of networking, because that's how I really ended up starting and getting my own job. Okay. Because they found me at my portfolio review, Maxwell Partners, mm-hmm. which Sandy was the one that said you need to hire her. Okay. So from that, and I did not realize that, I mean, there was the Lord looking out for me because I did not, I, when I started school, I started under business as yeah. my emphasis yeah. and I was making C's and D's <laughs> and it's like, there's no way I'm going to survive yeah. four years of this. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I was like, I got to change my major. And the only thing, other thing, the only other thing I know that I like is art. So what major can I choose that I can be an artist that could possibly make money? I'm like weaving, sculpture, drawing, because I couldn't draw. Um, what else is there? Painting. It's like I'm going to be hungry. <laughs> I don't I can't. <laughs> I can't go those route. Graphic design. Hmm. And I didn't know I had been doing little bits of graphic design, like in high school and stuff. I had taken like a graphic design class and stuff like that for the through the vacational did, school, vacation school. That's the one thing I'm, I've always wanted to ask you: How did you not know in the beginning that graphic design was what you wanted to do when you, well, like Uncle Arthur was claimed that you designed the bridge, but really you just designed the the sticker for the cars that mm-hmm. show the bridge, but you drew that. I didn't right? know that that was graphic design. I knew it was graphic design, but I didn't know that you could go to school for that. So, so did was business, 
why business initially? Because you just all know? black parents tell you engineering, <laughs> <laughs> business, yeah. you're not quite smart enough, sweetie, to be a lawyer or a doctor. Mm. Go to business school. Get a good business. Be business. <laughs> what does that mean? Mm -hmm. But that's what they told me to do. Uh, so that's what I did. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Your daddy didn't tell you anything else? I'm surprised he didn't tell you like accounting or something. Cause he I knew I didn't speak math in high school. I've known math has oh, never yeah. been. Uh, true. No. Wow. But dad was doing his own thing. Okay. No, I mean. Now I now I understand. Mm -hmm. Wow, twenty five years in, I was always worried. I was, cause it just it. I mean, I, cause it just the art part. Kind of it oozes out of you, and I'm like, okay, that's kind of obvious to me. But yeah, I I don't. It was forest for the trees type of thing. Mm. I don't even think they knew that graphic design was something you could get a degree in. Because literally, what happened? I forget. Yeah. I. That course catalog, that's what happened. <laughs> I was reading through that course catalog because I was like at the end of freshman year yeah. and I had a two point something. And I was like, I'm about to lose my scholarship. I'm about to, um, and I cannot go back home. Yeah. So I've got to change my, I've got to change my, my emphasis. Um, and I got the course catalog and I just was looking through the art section mm -hmm. and literally the description, you know, basically was like, you can do this and make money and be in the professional world. Yeah. <clears throat> and I was like, I think that makes, I think that fits. Wow. And I remember going to change my major and it was in the middle of like ad drop. Mm -hmm. And the counselor was like, you came today in the middle of ad drop and I didn't even know what ad drop was. Right. Um, and I'm like, yeah, she was like, <sighs> like, I remember she was not happy with me, but she still did it yeah. and helped me change my major. And I didn't tell my parents I changed my major. I just did it. Wow. Wow. That's, that's I mean, that's, that's, that's but, but it's, it's, you see how God just mm -hmm. knows how to, how to guide you. I didn't you. even know God was, was taking care of things like it was. Cause when I was, when I was, um, cause after my first year at Ball State and I came back and then I went to the military in order to pay for school. When I was at College of DuPage, mom, mom was, even though, even though I had, my first year was like pre-engineering at Ball State, mm -hmm. she was still in my ear about Anesthesiolo being an anesthesiologist. Mm -hmm. And so when I was at College of DuPage, I was taking my engineering I was, take, I was still taking my basic courses mm -hmm. um, that were like pseudo pre-engineering, but they also bled into pre-med. Mm -hmm. And I got to, um, I was in, uh, I was in the, I was in my chemistry class prior to organic chemistry. Mm -hmm. And organic, organic chemistry was like one of the highest level of chemistries, but that, that last chemistry class I was taking I had um, a number of classmates who, in Lombard, there was another school that once you finished your associate degree, mm -hmm. you would go to this school to become a chiropractor. And they had, and they would, they would take you through the last years of being a chiropractor. Mm -hmm. And this was, I mean, at the time, I, mean, I didn't know nothing about no chiropractor, but I knew that it was close enough to some form of medical. Mm -hmm. And they were like, man, you, you know what, you need to take organic chemistry. And I'm like, man, my mom wants me to, wants me to you know, I'm still thinking about engineering, but she wants me to do this. Mm -hmm. And when I got a taste of organic chemistry, I was like, yeah, no. If, if I have to go through this to go to medical school, not to do pre not happen. Now, my thing is, why she wants you to be an anesthesiologist? It wasn't like when you were a toddler, they were like, yep, he'd make a good anesthesiologist. Look at him go. Because, <laughs> oh, you know why? Because when she had, she had a surgery. Right. And there was a brother. That, right. right. That was an anesthesi her anesthesiologist. And she spoke to him. And, and he and, said, and that, I make blah, blah, yep. blah, blah, blah. And, and she was point, like, she you was know like, what? That's what my baby going to be. That's exactly, that's exactly what happened. Business. <laughs> 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 but, uh, yeah, that. 
Not that you were good at it. Not that you were good with I needles. No, I would have. <laughs> you know what? I, I think I would have because it, it it wasn't something that because you know there are some some kids that go into a major or going to classes where it's just it just comes easy mm-hmm. easy to them. Mm-hmm. Um, I knew organic chemistry. That particular type of chemistry wasn't going to come easy to me. Mm-hmm. Everything else came easy to me, but that that would have been a struggle. Yep. That would yeah. that would I would have I would have had to. That's when you have that light bulb that going, one. like, don't set yourself up for this. Yeah, but and it, it's just <laughs> it's just interesting how, man. If I would have you were never going to be a anesthesiologist because the thing was you would have failed those classes. That's why I was like, I'm never going to get a business degree because I'm going to fail the classes and end up getting kicked out of school. And then I got to go home. It's not <laughs> happening. Mm-mm. I don't know if I wouldn't have failed a class. I yes, you would have. I just don't know. I know. I, trust me. There have been classes I had, like, I had differential equations, which is one of the highest But maths. still is different than I, <laughs> I hated it, but I fought through it and ended up getting a B out of that class. Right. That means it wasn't that bad, because if you fought through it, uh, you, when you fight through it, that's when you get a seventy. <laughs> that's when you like, I am one point beyond. Fa- I earned the seventy. Yeah, but it's just, um, yeah. I mean, I, I look back and, yeah, I was I was supposed to go down the path I went down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, now we could have made some different decisions and done some things earlier if we had been brave enough. But and that uh, that's what I wanted because I was thinking about that earlier when you were talking. Um <clears throat> cuz I was talking to to Claire earlier. Um Claire is Grayson's handler, big boy handler that we <laughs> we have typically for the summer. She's for home for the summer from college and and uh, I was talking to her today about that and she she was saying that a lot of her peers have a fear of not being um, accepted or failing, right? Or or being rejected, and by each other or what? By each other, by their their professor, by a college. Like when they when they apply for college, there's this, there's this whole thing about fearing of being rejected. And not being accepted, mm-hmm. um, and it can crush their psyche, right? If they had just that, that so does not matter. And I, and that's what I was telling her. I said, you know what? If, if you can, if I can give you any piece of advice, it, don't. You need to fight through fearing rejection, mm-hmm. Get, or needing acceptance, or needing the yeah, acceptance. This is the opposite of it, but you need to. If you can, if you can eliminate that. Your eyes would be open to but so much. The society totally sets you up for all of that. You mean even with the explain. even with college? You know, I mean that's the first part. Really, the first parts of it. you got to get that acceptance letter. Yeah. You know, they ain't giving you no money, but they just go ahead and said, "Sure, you can <laughs> sure. come spend all your money here yeah. and all your parents' money yeah. for the next five years, and then, <clears throat> or excuse me, for the next four years, and then they get you in there." And you still got to be accepted into your major. Mm. And then after you get into your major, then you got to really fight to graduate. It's a constant like yeah. always like trying to get over these hurdles of acceptance. And it's like yeah. not actually wrapping your mind around, OK, if I don't get accepted, there is actually a plan B. I mean, there's there's something else that I can do. But it's not, I mean, you get so focused and obsessed over that. And it's like, really, this is not what dictates the future. Well, and, that, and that's what I was telling her. I was telling her that just because you don't get accepted, to me, I mean, you know, after, you know, after some additional years of wisdom, all that means is that that institution not was not for you. for you. Right, right. There is a spot for you. There, There is something for you. Mm-hmm. The thing is, you, you, you can't you can't have the mindset of giving up trying to find what that spot is mm-hmm. just because you get a rejection from, from one. one. Right. Um, because we were talking about Lathan and, and, and what his thoughts are going to, what his actions are going to be come this time next year. Um, and Don't I, we all want to know. Well, I, I think he's, I think he, he's really going to stay in state. 
I do too. He's still going to be in my house. I think he's going to be Sundays. either at Kennesaw or Georgia State. Mm-hmm. Um, in an apartment even though, even that he is. Keeps saying he want to get away. I'm like, dude, you go. No, right his down version the of his version of getaway is just past the driveway. <laughs> That's it. It's not really getting away. He still wants to be able to, you know, come right. to our house to grocery shop. Yeah, yeah. And and I was telling her, I said, you know what? If you can impart some wisdom on any of your peers, tell them don't put the stress on themselves about trying to be accepted or trying to or fearing rejection right when it comes you know you just pivot and move because god know? god will place you where mm-hmm. he where you are supposed to be mm-hmm. he'll give you the institution he'll give you the job he'll he'll give you everything right. where you're supposed to be but i do i can tell you when i got didn't get rejected from portfolio review <laughs> getting accepted in my college but that was that was but that was your time <laughs> i know but that's what you were looking i'm to just do. talking about that amount of relief that i got oh yeah and i remember because back in the olden days they posted your grade by social security number. Yep. So your everybody's everybody in the class had your the posted on a sheet of paper outside. Four. No, it was the whole social security Yours number. Your whole social security whole number. Whole social security number, posted on the professor's door. And because I wasn't born in Illinois, mine started with a four. Oh. So mine will always be down at the bottom. So I couldn't even go through and do the whole, you know, right, scanning right. up and down. Yeah, it was like to straight to the bottom. And I remember when it said accepted, I just about peed on myself because it was like I had done all this work. Yeah. And they were like, yes, you're good enough. And it, but it didn't even click to me like, you know what? I'm all right. I'm really already good enough. Yeah, you were. <laughs> but, 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 but you have to admit, though, the work you did, all the work you did to prepare for that test right mm-hmm. or that that review of what you can do mm-hmm. taught you perseverance oh yeah definitely right it, it definitely it, it taught that's you. what i'm saying it was no, it was you, a good you, feeling when i got accepted yeah so i mean it, it, it wasn't and not my identity stolen but yeah <laughs> right you think about like <laughs> yeah it was so security, whole number, social just security number just out there no name or nothing but you had a whole just rip that sucker down and save it for later just it was a piece of paper taped to the professor's door but at that time you know, internet was just coming. Right. Nobody was savvy enough, really. Computer science really wasn't that big of a of a major just yet. But ain't nobody's numbers changed, so you could have kept it. <laughs> <laughs> Only the devious mind of Cedar will know. You know, I'd be like, mm. <laughs> that's why I'm glad I'm not evil. Yeah, yeah. You use your powers for, for good. Good, not evil. Man, so. Are we? But are that's we good, wi- though. Okay. I think we're winding up. Are we? Because I can't yep. see. Because I was just talking. So what was the verdict? The verdict is... Um, I, I think the verdict is is that education in itself is valuable. And you have to understand that it doesn't necessarily have to be a formal education. Mm-hmm. It's about getting the information that you need to do the task or the job right. at hand. And, right. What you want to do what to you want finesse to do. what's already in you to hone your skills. Yes. But you do not need to pay $170,000 no. to be a basket weaver. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. And if, if anything, you know, <clears throat> take a hard assessment of what you enjoy to do, what your passions are, and there's what you a whole bunch do. of like test those tests online that mm-hmm. tell you what you're good at and what you're not good at, and da 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 da. Yeah, yeah. Take a hundred of those, right? For free, for free, right? And just be like, you know what? There's a couple of core classes that I can take at this university. Hip, who, you know? Because if you if you laser focus, guess on what, what you anybody do? can register for a class. You might not be able to register for the next level of that class, but you can register for the class. Yep. Yeah, save you a whole lot of money all right so we appreciate y'all listening to us on this episode of idea to invention as we discussed education and the value of it and what it really needs to be for you to move forward in whatever aspect of life you want to take and black fraternity and sorority houses do not have house house moms or maids <laughs> or even food service so, and even in 2020, right. they don't. Nope. This is 25 <laughs> years later, and it still don't happen like that. <laughs> All right, y'all. So we're sounding off, and yep. that's it for us for this episode. So take care. Be blessed. And be a blessing. Peace. Peace.